moving from fairness to sustainability, and obviously at the, the Office of the Future Generations Commissioner, talk about well, a quadruple bottom line, really, sustainability in terms of the economy, in terms of the environment, in terms of well-being, in terms of culture. Okay. Could you unpack that a little for everyone in the room? Okay, so, so in a, a, a very holistic approach, I've actually looked at these three concepts in, in, in combination, and actually the, the underpinning of, of fairness, sustainability, voice, is, is fundamentally democracy. Um, and I would argue that, that by involving people, representing people's concerns, values, um, interests in, in, in what we do is fundamental to achieving sustainability. Um, I, I'd say that it, it's quite often the art and science of compromise, um, that actually what, what government might want to deliver, what people on the ground might want to receive or be involved with, are quite often two different things. Um, but creating that deliberative space somewhere in the middle to be able to say what is it that we can realistically do um, with, with common interest um, to ensure human sustainability in the interest of, of providing a, a fairer Wales that's, that's environmentally sustainable as well. Um, so, so particularly for me, it's about engaging with people in, in common purpose. And in terms of that sentiment, what sort of products, services, actions does that relate to? Um, for me, it's just about everything, um, particularly with the, the Future Generations Act um, now that, that we're looking at increasingly um, democratising public services, um, different ways about doing that. So, you know, it's no longer just a consultation, um, but how do you uh, create and sustain that ongoing dialogue? Um, because I, I often say... Um, you know, if you're looking at creating a, a more equal society, it's not necessarily about giving the same thing to everyone. Actually, the, in creating equality and fairness, it's about doing things differently for different people. Uh, Caroline, if I may bring you into the discussion now. I, I appreciate that there'll be many people in the room who are perhaps unfamiliar with Be The Spark and, and the agenda and the vision it, it pursues. And, um, and perhaps people in the room who are, who are new to the concept of innovation-driven entrepreneurship so perhaps you could help help the room understand these things and, and how they relate to, to this way else we want to see. One thing that struck me is the common shared language and the common shared goals we have. So back to Mike's um, original question, Be The Spark is also a movement. And Be The Spark is a vision to drive more innovation-driven entrepreneurship, to drive to encourage more homegrown, profitable companies in Wales so we can drive more prosperity. Because in short, prosperity for Wales is a phenomenal policy. I don't think you'll find many people on this planet who will disagree with its outcomes, but who's paying for it? So we're really good in Wales at spending money to make a difference. We also need to make some money. Um, and that's what's behind Be The Spark. It's also about linking. Um, there's a proven model for the, the, the best economies in the world who link five key stakeholder groups together who work together and help and support each other. And they're entrepreneurs, government. When I say government, I mean public sector, um, corporates, risk capital, and academia. And it's a proven blueprint. It's a proven model.